Welcome back everybody, it's Paul Maglev here. I had a request for another episode of Steam Train 5.0, and so you have wished it and so it shall be. Last night I had tried on several occasions, almost one after the other in quick succession, uh, trying to record the next episode, and each one I wasn't very satisfied with, so I kept doing it over again, and again, and again, and again, and I just didn't feel like I got what I was looking for. So, today we're just going to take a quick look over at not dispatcher mode. We could do that correctly, but that would take well over an hour. So, we're just going to do the mail train again this time, however... Oh, no. Hold on a sec. We need to go back to Mail Train. We need to readjust it so that we have uh, the right locomotive. We're going eastbound to Esterberg, of course. We got our personal high score of 260. And... Uh, yeah, I think that should do it. I think we're going to have six cars in total, just for the extra challenge, though I probably shouldn't do that. But anyway, let's get started. Ow. 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 Oh. Right. This is left over from the previous recording session. We'll have to reset this all over again. And the only way to do that is to switch between game modes. I don't know why. Nostware, fix your game. Okay. So, let's see. I tried to do some research on when to operate the bell and when to operate the whistle. And I came across some stuff from the NMRA, as well as the Union Pacific, on some of the standards that are... Uh, established in North America. And I was kind of surprised because it's a lot more complicated than I first thought. But I'm just gonna keep ringing the bell so long as we're out here in the portion of the yard that actually uh, has pedestrian access, I guess, for the sake of caution because there's people unloading and unloading stuff at the docks. I couldn't necessarily know which whistle to blow when you start up and when you stop. I couldn't find that for some reason. But then again, maybe I should have looked a bit harder. Let's see if we can go full throttle without slipping. Okay, that should do it. So anyway, how's it going, everybody? Uh, not much has changed in the way of, uh, uh, me personally since the previous episode. What I can tell you is a few updates here and there related to... I think just pretty much anything related to model trains, of course. We'll start off with, uh, some of the stuff that I might not have mentioned, and that was... Uh, some model trains that I was given over the holiday uh, from someone I didn't expect was actually going to give me anything this time of year. Uh, one of my uncles had passed over some HO scale model trains that uh, were just sitting around in his house that he didn't have much use for, I guess. So he gave them to me, and that was actually really nice. I didn't think he would actually stick his neck out for me, because usually... Uh... We don't exchange gifts uh, between people we don't actually physically see, usually. We usually just make a phone call saying happy holidays or that sort of thing. But for some reason he went above and beyond the Call of Duty and got me some uh, model trains that were laying around. It took some effort to get them to function again properly. But it's nice to uh, 
have that sense of accomplishment when it comes to actually uh, fixing up something that has been sitting around for a while and getting it to function again. Because when I first put uh, the locomotives on my HO scale track, they didn't quite function right. The circuit wouldn't complete because the electricity wasn't being conducted by the wheels. So the only thing that I could do in a situation like that is basically just uh, clean the wheels. And cleaning the wheels was not necessarily an easy task. I'd show you what the equipment I used to actually clean those up, however it appears that I don't actually have uh, that on my desk because I had cleaned it up because we were having company. But I got them cleaned up, it was really nice, everything's worked out. And as far as I can tell, as far as I can tell, one of them is a electric locomotive, or what's supposed to represent an electric locomotive. It was made in Italy by Lima, well, unless it's Lima. I'm not entirely certain. Go. We got our mail over at Littleton, and now we should be able to just refuel. Uh, but I think the locomotive I liked most was that electric one I just mentioned. It has this weird mechanism on the inside. It's kind of strange, but I took a look at it, and I wasn't entirely sure what to uh, make of it. Because it looks like there were wires going up to the pantographs to uh, basically allow for electricity to flow through the pantographs and let it operate uh, like the real thing. And I wasn't entirely sure what to make of that because I wasn't able to actually induce a current using uh, bits of electrical equipment that I had laying around. Gonna have to turn the volume a bit. But I had tested it with the equipment and it seemed like the pantographs didn't quite work the way I thought they would. But that's okay because I was able to get the whole locomotive to function properly, which is nice. The catch is that my favorite locomotive from the entire set that was given to me also has a weird coupling mechanism that is indicative of a decent number of HO scale models that are produced and manufactured in uh, Western and Central Europe. It's this weird uh, hook and loop system that basically just keeps all the cars together, unlike what you see in North America where you actually see uh, scale representations of knuckle couples or uh, their HO, square, HO scale substitute which is shaped kind of like a ram's horn for some reason I think it was because it was easier to assemble or produce but because the coupling system isn't compatible with my other cars it's going to be a bit difficult trying to find a way to uh, hook it up with everything else, and something tells me we are going to miss. Yeah, we overshot. Let's back it up. Three short whistles. There we go. We're still ahead of schedule according to the point system. But we're going to refuel here because that's the best thing to do. In all the other times I tried to record this, I wound up running out of fuel because I always forgot. That's what happens when I multitask. There's always something that gets overlooked. Any other rail updates? Uh, the first thing, or should I say, the next thing that comes to mind is that video I posted for the 
1,000 subscriber milestone, which was the technically 999 subscriber milestone. Of course, named after the uh, numbering system used for the Galaxy Express 39. And uh, the reception's been pretty decent. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty much a lot more than I expected it to be because the 500 subscriber milestone didn't go as far as I would have wanted it to, but it still exceeded expectations even back then. But that's beside the point. My point is that I had... My point is that I had posted the video online after having rendered it and edited everything together. And I had used some music that was recorded by the United States Marine Band. And I'm not sure if you know this or not, but the majority of works produced by government officials, civilian or uh, military personnel, are supposed to be, from what I've researched, part of the public domain. At least so long as it's produced by the American uh, federal government. I can't say the same thing for other governments across the globe, but for the most part, the majority of it is supposed to be public domain. And when I used the uh, audio that I had found, which was available on YouTube, uh, for the song that I was using, I thought everything was going to be just fine, but then uh, YouTube's content ID system flagged it. Uh, I don't know how it got a positive ID for the song in question, because it turns out that I had used uh, a performance of the United States Marine Band playing Gustav Holst's... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Jupiter? The Bringer of Jollity from his series of musical compositions, The Planets. But for some reason, YouTube thought I was using Frank Sinatra's Sunday. And I thought to myself, why is that? Because that, that couldn't be any different. That couldn't be any more different than it actually was, because I was using an instrumental song that was produced or composed over a hundred years ago, and it thought I was using a song that was made in the 20th century that actually had lyrics. So I had one of two decisions at that point in time to make. The first possibility was to actually just go and uh, file a dispute. But it was on a day that I didn't want to have to worry about filing a dispute and waiting 30 days or so for uh, the entire process to be said and done. It's, it's complicated, but long story short, I changed out the music for something that I knew was from the YouTube library, which would never be falsely flagged as belonging to someone. So I just got a song that I knew required no attribution from YouTube's library. And then after that, I... what did I do? I re-uploaded it, didn't have to worry about it again, and that was all she wrote. I basically posted... I can't remember how many places I actually shared that video. I think I put it on the JNS forums for... Uh, model trains that are produced in Japan. Also, uh, posted it on Reddit in the section for model trains. I posted it on Facebook as I always do, even though I hardly ever use the thing because I just know that I'm being tracked. Not that it really matters to me personally. There's not much I really broadcast on Facebook. 
other than something that's self-promoting, but... I like to maintain some level of privacy, even though I'm fairly transparent when it comes to other things. I had some other plans as well, because I feel this is the year of the LEGO train. And the reason for that uh, is due to the fact that I haven't committed myself to actually looking at LEGO in quite some time, as I mentioned in the previous episode. And my plan was that I was going to get a certain model train in particular that was produced by LEGO. I think it's 4559. I think that's the product number. Is it the Cargo Train or is it the Cargo Express? I can't remember the name. But it was produced back in 96, so the set hasn't been produced for quite some time. And as you can possibly understand or might not know about, uh, when something isn't in production, usually its, va its value either extremely appreciates or extremely depreciates. A computer's value will substantially depreciate because there's better stuff on the market than uh, what you can buy used. However, when it comes to things like toys and model trains and stuff like that, the market is the complete opposite, where something that's produced appreciates in value after production has stopped. And from what I've understood, at least from John Sterling, when you rely on a business model on par with uh, someone who produces uh, toys or model trains or that sort of thing, you try to limit the amount of supply in order to maximize uh, price tags to maximize profits. It's harder than I am able to explain it, because I obviously didn't explain it well. But just take my word for it when I say that the value substantially appreciated uh, for this model train set, and that I have to go through some motions before actually acquiring it. I feel like I'm going over the speed limit. I think we need to speed up. Actually, no, we're at a station. We need to slow down. Hopefully we slow down enough. Yeah, I think that's enough. And we've narrowly avoided coming into contact with the ghost train. We'll be able to see it fairly quickly right now. I'm not entirely sure I'll be able to... Actually, you know what? Hold on, I need to stop. I need to pan over here to get an idea of how much further along I have to go before I move forward, because I don't want to risk... how you say... running out of fuel, because going up and over the summit there isn't any sort of uh, place to resupply on fuel and water. Which is never a good thing. And I don't want to have to run out of fuel, so we're just going to have to go take a second pit stop where we just stopped by, resupply, and then uh, keep going forward. But I think that's pretty much all there is in the way of uh, model train updates. Uh, why is the... Can't, oh, right, it's because I have AutoCam. Just need to back up a little bit more. And then we should be able to just do what I intended. We are substantially uh, behind schedule with a severe penalty. 
But I think we'll be able to make up for that if we uh, if we go as fast as possible within the speed limits. Because I'm not known for actually going the actual speed limits. Usually I go under. Due to a lack of tractive effort. Case in point. Keep slipping. I don't want to slip. Speaking of slipping, back in 2007, I tried to play the train simulator back at that time by, I think it was Dovetail Studios. Uh, there's obviously more recent versions of that that I've actually purchased, though I haven't played quite yet. And as far as I can tell, I was trying to play this one level, it was very difficult, and for some reason I was starting up against a grade that I had to fight against, and I just couldn't uh, inch forward. I was basically trying to drive forward, but I just kept rolling back down the hill and all the drive wheels were slipping. It was completely ridiculous. So we should be able to just stop by the summit right about here. And then we should be able to make the mad dash uh, down the hill, past the summit to our final destination. However, something tells me that we aren't going to be making a lot of headway because we're going to have to plow through the snow. And we're already at full throttle and we're barely going... Okay, maybe we're going a little bit faster than I expected, but... Uh, we had a very slow start from when we just stopped over at the summit. But we'll be able to make up for lost time heading down the hill. Because the gradient's on our side. Okay, so we were able to bring the penalty down to 40. Something tells me we're going to overshoot again. And I was correct. Just got to back it up a little bit. And that'll do it. So yeah, that is Steam Train version 5.0. I will see you again next time, and until then, take care, stay awesome, stay true to yourself, and remember to never give up. Bye, everybody.